This is an ASI 585MC and this is an ASI 2600MC Air. Now what would happen if these two cams would make out and have a child? This is what we will cover today, right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so great to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So let's have for a second a look at these two cameras which I just presented to you. As stated, this is the ASI 585MC. So this is an uncooled camera and it has a tiny little sensor in there which has a rather high resolution. This sensor and this camera got pretty popular for lunar imaging, for planetary imaging, but given its great performance, its low read noise, its high resolution and its quite low price, it also attracted the interest of non-planetary astrophotographers. And so the logical conclusion was that soon after also a cooled version of this camera was coming to the market. Now here we have something completely different. The ASI 2600 MC Air was the first camera that Zeebo created that has everything in one package. The camera sensor, the guiding sensor and the mini computer the ASI Air all in one body. And while this concept is amazing there was one issue. The camera is still quite expensive around $2000. And that's obviously when the idea came up. How if we merge these two products into one, an ASI 585MC Air. And here it is, the ASI 585MC Air. So today we want to unbox it and we want to look at for whom this camera is. So first of all, the price of the camera, which is available from today, is $800. And while also $800 is not for free, it's still amazing. If you think about it, the ASI Air is around at least $200. Then any guide cam, even the cheapest one, would be at least $100 plus an off-axis guider or a guide scope. You're also at $200. So if we deduct that, we're at $400. So in principle, you get a cooled 585 camera for $400. So it's really an amazing price. And that also leads to definitely the first group which will be very interested in this camera and that's the beginners. I also stated already in other videos that I believe that the Air concept is really made for beginners. Because starting this hobby is already overwhelming enough. So having not to take care separately with an ASI Air, guiding, the camera, but having this already as an integrated package makes the entry into this hobby so much easier. And with this camera now, it's also much more affordable. So let's now have a look what's actually in this box. So we have obviously some documentation of what's in the box. Then we have the camera as always in the nice little bag and we have some additional stuff in this box. Now before we actually open the bag with the camera, let's look what's in this box. Some USB cables, some electricity cables, the antenna, that's really important, and some spacers and adapters. And they even add a little bit of Velcro for the little bit of cable management, which still might be needed. And how could it be otherwise an Allen key? One more in my exclusive collection of Allen keys. So now having actually stretched your patience long enough, let's open the back. And here is the cam. So first we have to screw the antenna on. Okay, so let's look first at the back. We have also one USB-C and four 
USB 2.0 ports. That's exactly the same as with the 2600 MCR. The only difference is that we have only two electricity ports in out. It's 12 volts, 3 amps. That's exactly the same as with its bigger brother. But I stated only two, which is, should I say, disappointing because three are still kind of needed because you will need one in, you will need one to the mount, and you would need one for the do heater. So you either need to feed the mount and the camera separately, and then you can still feed the do heater band with the camera or you add another power distribution in any way from here to two other ports. So there are different ways how to do that. What you should not do is actually use one of the USB ports to power the dew heater band as they only have a max of one amp. So you kind of risk of frying the board. I wouldn't do that. So obviously you might ask, why does it only have two ports here? Because when I have it in my hand, it looks like a regular Sibo camera, right? But when we're holding now the ASI 2600 MCR side by side, you see the difference. They're actually the same long, but from a diameter point of view, this is much smaller and also lighter. And because of that, because the housing is smaller, they obviously had to manage the space differently. But you also see here, if we put it side by side, that otherwise it looks about the same from a setup at the back. And if you want to look now at the sensor, you see here nicely the main sensor and the guy sensor on top. And it's actually interestingly how it's organized that the guide sensor is on the landscape side of the main sensor, which is surprising. And I wonder why they did it like that, but probably also again because of a space management. So with that, we come again to the question, for who is this camera? We already discussed this on one hand for beginners. There is only one thing, if you're a beginner, if you're interested in this camera, you have to think about. Because of the tiny sensor, the field of view is relatively small narrow, which means that you can still capture rather large objects, like for example Andromeda Galaxy or something like that. You have to choose a scope which is also rather wide. So I would say, for example, a 300 millimeter scope would be a very good match. But you can always, with some simulators, look at that, what you really need but I think it's something to really keep in mind. But I said, there's two groups. So we have the beginners, and from my point of view, we have the owners of SETs. And that's also why I bought it. And by the way, just to be completely transparent, while I got a discount, Cebo doesn't give them out for free. So there is a reason why I was interested in this, and that, is in combination with my Celestron 925 Edge HD. Because with that, I really want to capture small objects on one side, lunar pictures, planets, but also small galaxies, planetary nebulas. And so I really want to go close. So I'm not so interested in a big picture. And so the 2600 MCR was a little bit overkill for that. And I can also use it there if I need it. But I think most of the time I want to go narrow and then I want to have a high resolution in these small fields to capture these small galaxies. And from that point of view, I felt this is the ideal match. And quite honestly, once you had an air, you kind of spoiled. I really love this concept of the air, of having all in once, do not have to care about guiding, about computer, about a lot of cables, having all at once and it's done. I think that's an amazing concept. What also makes it really great for these all-round SCT purposes 
is that it has a much higher transmission rate in the infrared spectrum than the 2600 MC. And especially when we talk about planetary and also lunar photography, sometimes you get really good results by simply focusing on the infrared band. And for that, this here is ideal. So when you have this camera, no matter what you want to do, you want to do planetary, you want to do lunar, you want to capture some small galaxies, a planetary nebulous, you do not have to change your whole setup anymore, but you can just do it one after the other. It also captures around 40, I think, frames per second. So for planetary, you can do your videos with it. And I think that's really attractive. So for me, this will be from now on my default setup on my SET. Now, have I already made photos with it? No, because I just received it today and it's cloudy as usual in Switzerland. But I, anyway, I find this sometimes strange because this is the 585 sensor. We know it from the uncooled version. We know it from the Pro, the MC Pro version. So it's not like if I would shoot now with it that I go like, wow, it blows my brain. This is something completely new. We know the results that this camera can bring. And if you, for example, look at Astrobin, you see lunar, you see galaxies, you see planetary nebulas, exactly what I meant. This is all already tried and successfully tested with this sensor and this will deliver exactly the same result. It's more a thing of convenience, having now all integrated in this small attractive package. So that's it already for today. So I'm interested now what you think about this camera. Is this something for you? Do you see other purposes that I mentioned where you feel this camera would be a perfect fit? Please leave it in the comments below. And if you want to be more closely involved in how I test it, what I shoot with it, what I experience with it, you will always be the first to hear it if you join my Patreon site. Link is also in the description below. See you next time and clear skies.